After coveting Willow for three years, I finally gave in and abducted her to my home. I fastened a silver chain around her ankle and told her never to even think about leaving me in this lifetime. In the first month, she preferred death over yielding, wanting me to set her free. During the second month, she slowly started to compromise, tacitly permitting me to share the bed with her. In the third month, she began to push me even further, interrogating me as to why I was five minutes late coming home. Was I out fooling around with other women? Seeing the woman in front of me playing with the silver chain, with a slight redness in the corners of her eyes, I broke down. After all, who is the real Yandera here? You're five minutes late again today. Willow said coldly, sitting on the bed, looking at me. Jacob, our company closes at six, and even with traffic, it only takes twenty minutes to get home. But you've been five minutes late for three days in a row. Are you fooling around with some woman again? She sneered, her red lips curling into a dangerous arc. Don't tell me I'm about to have a new roommate moving here. I swallowed, watching nervously as the woman in front of me played with the silver chain. She slowly leaned forward, parting her long legs and kneeling on either side of me, sitting atop me looking down, the corners of her eyes flashed a cool laugh. Did you forget what I said yesterday? One more time for every minute you're late. She wound the silver chain around my foot. Maybe this chain suits you better than me. I looked at her in horror, trying to explain, but she firmly covered my mouth, leaving me no choice but to scream in my heart. Who the hell is the real Yandere here? She was supposed to be an unreachable high lady. Two months ago, I did the most criminal thing in my life. I kidnapped my boss, Willow. This was the third year of my secret crush on her. She was previously my senior at school. After graduation, I swallowed my pride and begged left and right, finally managing to join her company through a referral. At first, I was just glad to be near her without expecting her to reciprocate my feelings. But the more I watched her, the more I yearned for her, so I decided to confess. However, on the day I planned to confess, I accidentally caught her intimate moment with a man, and she was even holding a large bouquet of roses. Frustrated and angry, my fury led to a daring and twisted idea. I would tie her up and take her home, so I asked her to escort me home claiming I wasn't feeling well. Under the pretext of getting a drink upstairs, I lured her to my home and got her drunk with a bottle of beer. Willow's tolerance to alcohol was terrible. I had never seen an Irish person with such poor drinking capacity before. She was truly a disgrace to Ireland. While she was unconscious, I dragged her to my bedroom and tied her onto the bed using a thin silver chain I had just purchased. Then, I faced a challenging decision. Yes, I wanted to make a move, but she was unconscious. There was no point in me fantasizing alone, so I had to wait for her to wake up. An hour later, Willow stirred, awakening. She looked at the chain tied around her foot and frowned. Jacob, are you detaining me unlawfully? She asked. I felt cold sweat replacing my earlier enthusiasm as I forced out a warning. For the rest of your life, don't even think about leaving me. Don't think of escaping, this chain is made of titanium alloy. It's not just you, even an elephant couldn't flee. Looking at her strange gaze, I decided to tell her the truth. You, like me? My face flushed as I stammered a response. Yes, I've liked you for three years. I didn't mind you not reciprocating my feelings, but you were even with another man. I could never allow that. You should stay obedient here. In your eyes, there should only be me. Your thoughts should be about me only, and your body should belong to me only. But Willow replied coldly. Impossible. I advise you to let me go as soon as possible. There's no chance I'll surrender. After I dropped a few more tough lines, I fled from the bedroom in a fluster. Truthfully, I regretted my actions almost immediately. This was illegal detention, a crime. And Willow was no pushover. She seemed untouchably elegant, but rumor had it she was a black belt in Taekwondo and had even studied Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I had personally witnessed her subdue someone who had disturbed her. The chain I mentioned was not made of titanium alloy. It was merely a cheap dog chain I had purchased, just finger thick. A strong yank from her would be enough to break it. Would she beat me up when she got out? Yet, I was unable to resist her. 
Frustratingly, I gritted my teeth, ready to make the best of my circumstances. I was set on this dangerous beauty. During the first month, Willow was as defiant as she claimed. Every time I entered the bedroom, she would stare at me with a cold, deathly gaze. Every time I tried to touch her, I was deterred by it. Several times, I sneaked into her room at night, but as soon as I lightly touched her, she would open her eyes. The moonlight reflected in her eyes made her look like an awakened vampire. It gave me a start, and I dared not go again. But she also didn't attempt to leave. It seemed like she truly believed my lies, and the chain that tethered her to the spot was like a small twig tying up an elephant. Luckily, the chain was long enough that she could still access the insert bathroom without any issues. Thinking that I could not soften her heart through force, I tried to melt it with love. Every day, I would go into her room and recite the history of my crush on her, but she never responded. When I confessed how much I liked her, she would just turn away, as if disgusted to even look at me. By the end of the month, I slowly grew disheartened. I figured that maybe this wasn't going to work. Forced love could never be sweet. At most, I could only sneak glances at her. Without her consent, I could not do anything else. Perhaps I should return her back and turn myself in. I also knew, realistically, a person like Willow would never fall for someone like me. She was always the most dazzling existence among crowds, while I was merely a dull backdrop. Falling for Willow was too easy. Back when I first joined the literary club, we were asked to produce a performance. I had planned a piano and violin duet with a girl, but the girl's boyfriend became jealous and threatened to break up with her if she went on stage with me on the day before the performance. Suddenly without a partner, I was helplessly adrift. Willow, who happened to pass by, picked up the violin and offered. Play. I'll accompany you. The performance was excellent and when the final note dropped, the audience erupted into applause. Later on, I found out that Willow was not even part of our club. She was the student council president and simply stopped by because she felt sorry for me. When I went to thank her afterwards, she merely nodded and left. For her, that moment was probably an insignificant blip in her life. But for me, from that day on, she was the only one in my eyes. Later, when she graduated and started her own business, I joined her company. However, her attitude towards me remained lukewarm. Even now, after going to such lengths to bind her and bring her home, she still refused to submit. I let out a sigh and decided to visit her tonight for the last few times. Once I've had my fill, I would release her and let her go home. Unexpectedly, Willow wasn't asleep this time. As soon as I came up to the bed, she grabbed my wrist. Just when I was scared out of my wits, Willow opened her eyes. It was quiet at midnight, with only the sound of my beating heart and her hoarse voice. Jacob, are you sick? She asked, illusion or not, it seemed like there was a twinge of disappointment in her eyes, I stuttered, unable to come up with a response, and she sat up rubbing her temple. You want to sleep with me that badly? I nodded. Of course, if I didn't want to, why would I have tied her up? Willow stared at me for a while. Then, just like a highborn lady forced into prostitution who had to reluctantly accept a client, she sighed heavily and said, Fine. You can sleep here tonight. But remember, we can only sleep, nothing more. Happiness came abruptly. I nodded repeatedly. If we couldn't do it then we wouldn't, but once I'd moved in, how far would other things be? Willow glanced over, looking a bit disgusted. Get your pillow. From that night on, I finally got to share a bed with Willow, my wish fulfilled. Every day I could blissfully watch her, my dreams seemed to turn pink. The only pity was that Willow would wake up gloomy every morning. She must have felt humiliated even though she'd physically conceded. Another month passed this way, and Willow seemed a bit restless. From being indifferent to me at the start, she had started to manage my life. Even the time I got off work fell within her purview. I didn't understand why the company still functioned without her, as if nobody realized the boss was missing. In fact, the business was growing, and recently, due to a lack of manpower, a batch of interns were hired. The intern assigned to me, Vanessa, was a college student who hadn't graduated yet. She was 168 centimeters tall, had a prominent nose with a small mole, and had long, straight lashes visible when she looked down. 
She was a sweet talker, always addressing me as bro and was diligent, asking lots of questions even after work. I admit that I'm a sucker for beauty even though Willow was the only one in my heart. But who could resist such a beauty? So the first time I went home, I was half an hour late. That day when I came home, Willow's face was darker than the night outside. When I served her dinner, she plopped herself onto my lap and buried her head into my shoulder. Just when I thought she had finally come around and my spirits were soaring, she said, Why do you have the smell of perfume on you? I was taken aback, recalling the faint, fresh scent of Vanessa. It was probably from teaching her to use the company's printer earlier, when we might have been too close. Did Willow have a dog's nose? How could she tell? Seeing that I didn't respond, Willow sneered. Every day you tell me how much you like me, but before three months are up, you're already tired and have another woman outside, right? Once you get what you want, you no longer cherish it. Jacob, I see you for what you are now. Wait a minute, what's with this tone like a scorned woman? I quickly explained, no no, the intern was just very eager to learn, so I taught her how to use the printer. She can't even operate a printer? Skylark's threshold is so low now that any moron can enter? Willow's expression darkened further, and she pulled out a phone from under the pillow. What's her name? I'll have HR fire her. I widened my eyes. Wait, where did you get this phone? Didn't I confiscate your phone? Why didn't she call someone to rescue her if she had a phone? Willow was startled, her expression blank for a split second. Then, she tossed the phone and pushed me down onto the bed. The flickering light danced on her clavicles. The shadowed hollows utterly captivated me, pushing thoughts of the phone to the back of my mind. Willow sat atop me, a chilling smile playing on the corners of her lips. She untied a silver chain that had somehow come off her ankle and used it to tie my hands to the bedpost, her voice indifferent. You came home half an hour late today. I'm going to punish you.